What's going on, everybody? So this is week 12 from, uh, what is it, season 4? Like I told you guys before, if you're following the franchise, I'm, we're actively in season 5 right now, which is going to be the last season of this franchise, and then we're going to a new franchise that's going to be consisted of, um, you know, the stock teams. It's not going to be a fantasy draft or whatever. And that's probably how I'm going to continue to do it from here on in. Um, but that's besides the point. Yo, if you guys haven't heard, um, yesterday, December 17, 2014, Bobby Schmurda was arrested on all kinds of crazy charges, bro. But I just wanted I wanted to let you guys understand something. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Boondocks or Aaron Magruder, who was a um he, he was he was a comic. Um uh, well he used to draw pictures in um a couple papers for a while before he got the chance to bring the boondocks to the big screen and then eventually that was taken from him because of ridiculous uh you know whatever when you start going corporate and shit like that, you know, they they, they take all your shit. But as you can see, it doesn't really matter. You know, some things that, that are yours from the heart, people can't duplicate. I'm dealing with a lot of similar situations in this matter community right now, and it's just like, you can't you can't be somebody that you're not, and they tried to have people write for it, and the last Boondock season when Aaron Magruder wasn't involved in it was complete garbage. Um, it was pretty much uh, similar to a shit stain that just been there, but continues to get more stink, bro. Like every episode, it was just horrible bullshit, and um, you know, they, they, really, they really fucked up by taking that man. It's sort of like what they did with Steve Jobs. And they took him from Apple, then they had to bring him back to make Apple be what it was, you know, before he passed away so early. Um, but, yo, yo, just, let's just get back to Bobby Schmurder right here. Like, he, Aaron Magruder made a lot of references to these rappers that, for some reason, they want everybody to know specifically what they did and what they're doing. Now, you have to understand something. Let, let me just be very clear right here. We know, as people of color, number one, anything you say will be and can be used against you, bro, in the court of law. So when you specifically say, your dude caught a body about a week ago, a week ago, which made him go viral with the seven million views or whatever and get that $1 million uh, deal, you gotta understand that after you sign that deal, everything has to change. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, Listen, we, we, can't, we can't change our struggle. We all been, well, I can't say we all, we're all been through, but we all had some crazy shit that we had to go through in life. But what I'm saying is once you break that point, you can't just have guns lying around no more. You can't be doing that shit because you got to remember, there's a lot of people in crews. And in every crew, there's one person that can't be trusted that acts like he's your best friend. So somebody's going to talk. So you have to limit that. You got to limit the, the, um, the counteractions with authorities by understanding the fact that, look, all right, I just signed a $1 million deal. All right, this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going we gonna to stop carrying guns with ourselves. And we're going to have dudes have the guns for us. I'm not saying don't bring guns with you. I'm just saying you from Brooklyn and you're a New York dude. And you got to understand that our gun laws in New York are really, really strict. So you got to play it according, accordingly to that. When you go to other states and the gun laws are a little bit more loose, you fuck around like that. But you, 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 you got, we got to become smarter. You know what I'm saying? We, we got to become smarter. Uh, like I said, I got a lot of love for gangster dudes, man. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I grew up with that. I understand. I got a lot of love for gangster dudes, but we got to be smarter. We got to understand that it's not about where you're from. It's where you're at. You know what I'm saying? And even though you, you're from where you got cop, you know what I'm saying? New York got you. You, It's sort of like it's the same scenario. Like, bro, you, you, you're saying in a song that you've been selling crack since the fifth grade. So you're new on the scene and the cops are seeing you all the time. They're going to watch you. If you've been selling crack since the fifth grade, I don't want to know what the fuck you're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, dudes is just looking like, all right, we're we going to see what's really good with this dude today. You know what I'm saying? And, and, they, and they had a probe going on. Can you just imagine like 10 to 12, you know, whatever, a room full of Caucasians listening to hot nigga? They're like, what, what is this guy saying? You know what I'm saying? They're like, what? You, bro, you keep the nine millies on your block, nigga. Like, like what? He, he does? All right, bro, right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm trying to explain to everybody. You know, they're like, yo, bro, I can't believe, you know what I'm saying? You know, they, they profile and they watching them. Bro, did you listen to hot nigga? You basically, I, I was just hollering at one of my other dudes, man. You know, my dude, D Morgan 504 You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the LA Kiss. You know, he's, he's like one of the, uh, he's the number one wide receiver on that team. Uh, D Morgan 504, whatever. And, um... I was trying to explain to him, what was this, like, four or five months ago. I was like, bruh, do you, did you really analyze the song? Because remember, I, was, I listened to Hot Nigga, but I only knew the, the week ago part, because everybody was making parodies from it. You know what I'm saying? I never listened to the whole song. So for the whole time that this has been going on, I didn't really realize what the song was about. So I listened to the song one day uh, in the gym, 
You know what I'm saying? And when it's bumping in the gym, it's like, oh shit, this shit raw as shit. But then I started listening, I'm like, hold up, somebody caught a body about a week ago. Um, not only that, um, he's been selling crack since the fifth grade. Okay. Um, he keeps some nine millies on his block. Um, what else? Uh, everybody catching bullet holes. Okay. All right. So this man has been saying that he's going to do a whole lot of shit or he's admitting to doing a whole lot of shit. And it's nothing. Listen, let me just explain something. You could say whatever you want, but it's about how you're descriptively describing it. You got to paint a picture. You guys ever noticed that that Drake is like the biggest gangster when he has a Sprite? You know what I'm saying? He's a light-skinned dude, so I think that, you know, light-skinned dudes have Sprites and go in the booth and spit straight fire. Well, he's the only guy right now that's spitting straight fire that's a light-skinned dude, but you guys know what I'm saying. And it's just like he's saying, you know, raw and uncut things, but it's not as descriptive. Only thing that Drake is really descriptive with is with how his heart was broken and he's more intimate with that. He's not saying like, yo, I'm on 16th Ave, nigga. I'm about to kill a nigga. 3 a.m., motherfucker. Like, bro, that rhyme is going to have somebody waiting for you at 3 a.m. to pick your dumb ass up. And that's why I prefaced this whole video with Aaron Magruder. The man is a genius. Um, I, I really respect his work. I really respect what he's trying to do for the people of color. But you got to be smarter. You can't... You just can't say, you know, like, there's some rock music that I listen to. I used to, you know, when I, when I was working out and shit like that, like Hard Body, I used to rock, like, some Metallica. Um, I used to rock some other bands that I can't even remember. Um, what the fuck was the other one? I can't remember what it was. Um, you know, Kiss, I had a little bit of stuff from them. Um, Corn and shit like that. Like, I, like, like, people were like, oh, shit, bro, you listen to that shit? When I used to bump that shit in the hood, they're like, yeah, bro, because the shit get you amped up. And, you know, obviously these guys are doing heavy drugs, most of them that are, that are doing this rock shit. And, you know, they're talking about a lot of craziness, but you don't get the sense that, like, yo, I'm going to be at this spot at fucking precisely 967, yo, bro, like, what, what, 936 and 67, uh, and, and uh, 57 seconds, and I'm going to be fucking selling the pack. Like, pretty much that's what dudes are doing in their rap songs. You're giving everybody complete descriptive information about where you're going to be, what you're doing, and what's happening. And that's what's going to go on with Bobby Schmurter. Now look, Bobby Schmurter is 20 years old, and the charges in New York, like once you got guns on you, now look, this is what's going to happen. Somebody has to take those gun charges, all right? Now, dudes don't want to go to jail right now, so because like they just got used to some money, whatever like that. Will they talk? I don't know, but a lot of dudes do. Like, I'm trying to, like, bro, dudes just, dudes will just be like, yo, all you gotta do is say, what's up, as the cop, and they be like, alright, let's go, I'm gonna tell you everything, like, bro, it's not even a lot to, to get somebody to snitch these days, so, what I'm saying is that, based on the pictures of all the guys that they arrested, there's at least four or five, um, squealers, as the Joker said in that Batman movie, you know, he's a squealer, I pointed, I pointed a lot of squealers out, so, somebody's gonna say something about those guns, and then it's like, alright, let's go back to a Bobby Schmurter, uh, song is Bobby bitch is Bobby B bro you're going to be prosecuted like you can't it's a very unfortunate circumstance that somebody didn't tell him like you got to understand if you're getting money you, you know you're trapping more than these dudes like you're telling them what you're doing so you got to know that the more money you make the more attention you're going to get so you're going to have to move with that type of correspondence you can't continue to do the same shit you see what I'm saying like you, look, look at Hove People, people were laughing at him and shit like that when he, you know, he started selling, you know, clothes and shit, got away from the gangster shit. Did he live it? abso fucking -lutely. But he understood, look, I got a lot more to lose if I keep doing this shit. 50 Cent, I got a lot more to lose if I keep doing this shit. After 50 Cent destroyed Ja Rule's world, you see how Ja Rule ended up in jail and all that kind of shit like that, he was going crazy? That's just post-mortem depression, bro. He realized he was done, and the motherfucker started doing everything that was stupid. That's different. But for the most part, what he was singing, you know what I'm saying? Always on time, and I do you in the lead. When he was doing those songs with Ashanti and everything like that, he was chilling. He was acting like he was Tupac, somebody that he wasn't. And that's what really exposed him. And he just started doing dumb shit. And the rest is history. But you can see that there's a difference with what these guys do and the guys that are still standing today. Ice-T, you know what I'm saying? He was one of the hardest, light-skinned dudes that was out for a little bit. But he might be considered a little bit more tan now. You know what I'm saying? But... He was hardcore. He was, you know, he was going in. But the nigga never said, yo, meet me here, you know, on this date, at this time specifically, I'm selling packs. And that's what these rappers, these young rappers are doing nowadays. And they don't realize 
bro, you're going to fucking jail. You're gonna be in jail if you keep on doing it like that. You can speak about experiences, but don't be as descriptive. You know what I'm saying? You guys know what I'm talking about as far as that Boondocks episode though, when the guy was saying, yeah, I shot him. I was there at this time. I was wearing this shirt. And the cop just said, okay, let's go. It, it's reality. That's the brand that you guys bring with hip hop. So we have to understand, you know, same thing with Young Thug. He's saying in the song, he don't got AIDS. He probably got AIDS. Why are you saying you don't got AIDS in the verse? And then you're banging out baby and all kind of crazy shit is going on, bro. Like Birdman, like I just don't understand why these guys are doing the stuff they're doing. And nobody's addressing it like, yo, look, you guys gotta stop. There's so many other ways to creatively do it. You know what I'm saying? Even when Biggie was going crazy with who shot you, he didn't go crazy as fuck. People had to wonder what the fuck he was talking about. He didn't say this guy specifically, birth certificate number this, this, and this. He didn't do that. And that's what's going on right now. So I guess he caught a body about a week ago. He's been selling crack since the fifth grade. What's going to happen now when he goes in front of a jury? You want to guess? I don't. Until next time, one love.